Hello there, it's Sandy All Knock, and today I'm going to be watercoloring hedgehogs. Aren't they cute? Today is a blog hop day celebrating the Pretty Pink Posh new release, and Paulina just had a wonderful little baby and I sent her this card made with one of the new sets. I am so excited for her. Seeing little pictures of Zion on the Pretty Pink Posh Instagram profile is so much fun. Go check it out, see the baby, and then you might need some baby stamps. This one I didn't have time to make samples with, but I did with all the other stamp sets that you're going to see. This one has little squares, and I had colored them all up, and in looking for a sentiment, I found this one from Ellen Hudson. And I just thought it was so cute. It inspired me to put glitter onto my already colored bunnies. And what I did was color each one of these twice. And then I fussy cut a top layer so that I'd have a little dimension there. Isn't that a nice way to do a little tiny square image on a card? So it is the season for those sugar coated marshmallow bunnies. This little stamp set has ladybugs on it. And what I did was create a card that has wax flower on it, which is in my wildflower Copic class that just launched recently. And I just added the little bug to it. And this little card is going to be on Instagram, IGTV. So you can check that video out over there. I drew my own vase to put my tulips in and made a card out of it. So the link to that will be in the doobly doo and Let's get started on the card that I'm making with this set, which is little cute hedgehog, hedgehogs. They're just adorable. Aren't they so cute? I'm using the Ink on 3, and I don't really know what that name is all about. But anyway, Ink on 3 makes a no-line coloring ink. And I had only used it for Copic stuff before when I was doing some testing, and I noticed it said you could also watercolor using it. So that was kind of a cool idea. So I thought I'd do some no-line watercoloring of the hedgehogs. I'm starting with the background. And one of the reasons is because if my background overflows and my brush kind of puts the cobalt teal blue into the hedgehogs for some reason, if, if I overpaint a little bit, then I can just paint over top of that background color. If I put the color down on the hedgehogs first, I'm gonna be really tight and careful about trying to stay around those outside edges. But since the other color is going to go over it, I can decide what color based on whether or not I went over. If I didn't go over, I can use light colors. And if I did, then I can make them stronger colored hedgehogs. So it's a real easy solution to trying to fussy paint around something. If you happen to hear crazy barking in the background, by the way, that is Giallo. I think the dogs are getting a little bit of cabin fever because they keep going outside and barking like mad. This whole social isolation thing for them is apparently difficult because they're very barky. And it could just be that there's more birds and squirrels out there than usual. Anyway, back to the painting. I have yellow ochre that I'm using for my little hedgies. And I thought I'd show you how you can watercolor them both in a very pale, soft way. And then also you can intensify that. So if you end up painting it really light, and you're like, man, I didn't like that, it was just not enough, then you can add more to it. So I'm giving them a shadow on the left-hand side, kind of smoothing the color out a little bit on the right-hand side, and even just kind of knocking out some of that white. It makes the clouds look whiter to not have any of the white left in the hedgehogs. And then once that was all completely dry, I could go in and add my, my little fur. No, it's not fur, they have spikes. So my spikes, they don't look very spiky, but <laughs> they're, they're sort of scallopy spikes on this because they're so cute. And I'm adding my color to it, some new gamboge. And then after that dried, I added a shadow using Aussie red gold. Did I say that right this time? Aussie? Every time I say Aussie, I get comments. <laughs> so there you go. It's spelled with two S's. Why is that? If you wanted it to be Z's, then it should be A-U-Z-Z. IE. But there we go. I heat set that a little bit so I could get busy painting the next section because I was a little worried that my pink might touch my yellow or something. So I usually only heat set when I'm trying to kind of keep an area locked in. Normally, if I possibly can, I like to let it air dry. So I'm just going to use the quinacridone 
rose for my other hedgehog. I decided that they would be whimsical colors rather than trying to do them in browns and grays and things like I normally do with hedgies to make them just a little bit more cheerful because I have been in the mode of doing cheerful, wacky colors. You may have noticed the storybook coloring class that I just launched as well, which is in all kinds of bright colors. And in the class, I kept to kind of standard looking colors in a very storybook style, but in my practice stuff, my, my playtime, where I'm using those techniques on cards, you can see some of those on Instagram, I'm trying to do wacky colors. So recently, just this past week, I did a whole castle scene with like pink trees and purple bushes, and it was just a blast. So you can make things any color you want because it's art and we can go wild with whatever we feel like. So here I'm intensifying the color. The ground was certainly fine. If you want a pale card, you could leave that, that initial color. I had used some serpentine with a little bit of sap green toward the bottom. And here I'm adding sap green in a thicker concentration. So it's got more pigment and less water in it. I painted a straight line across it and then used my brush to just make little grasses along the top edge so that it would be broken up and not look like they're standing on a glass floor because they're hedgehogs and they're hanging out outside with cute little uh, mushrooms. I almost said marshmallows. Mushrooms. I must have food on the brain. That could be. <laughs> but now I'm going to add a darker color down at the bottom. And then while that paint was nice and wet, I added some of the green appetite down at the bottom to just darken that. And it really gives a nice rich pop to the whole thing. You get a really strong contrast. You know me, I like my contrast. So the next thing as I was doing all this, I was thinking I really needed to do something more with the hedgehog's bodies because now they look kind of wussy. Before I did that though, I went in with my Sharpie, which is waterproof and put on the eyes and the nose and drew those back in. And if you really wanted to, you could draw in the arm and the the little snout, but I decided that was going to be too much. That would be too much black on there and I wanted to keep them more whimsical looking rather than outlined. And I'm adding another layer of the yellow ochre and just adding it in a thicker kind of a way. But I also, in addition to having that thicker paint, I have the lighter color paint that I already put down. So it gives me a range of those colors without having to do it all in one layer because it's really hard to get that whole gradation in one painting layer a lot of times. So using a clean kind of dampish brush to just soften those edges and finish that off. Super sweet, super easy, and super fun to take the tape off the paper. Is that just the best part of watercolor or what? <laughs> I don't always tape it down, but when I do, just that moment of watching it become a nice, clean, crisp white edge is just kind of fun. So I wanted to finish off a little bit more on this, and I used the heart that's in the set and added that up in the sky and also stamped You're an Awesome Friend on the front. So I could finish off my card. Look how cute they are. This is, by the way, on rough paper, so rough watercolor paper. So you've got all that nice texture. Stop on by the blog hop for more inspiration. See what everybody else has created with these sets. And of course, there's pictures there you can add to your Pinterest. And I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye.